Welcome in to another edition of Texas Sports Unfiltered. It is our weekly recruiting chat with Hank South of Horns 24-7 and 24-7 Sports. Super excited about this new feature coming to the channel and super excited to have one of the very best in the business with us every single week. Hank, what's going on, man? Thanks for the time. Hey, how you doing, Brad? Thanks for having me. Oh, of course, of course. Very excited about these conversations we get to have. You know it better than I do, man. I mean, Longhorn fans, look, they're all about what happens on the field on Saturdays, but they're also all about what happens in recruiting, and that's a 24-7, 365 deal right there. This is uh, this is going to be fun, and you know how big of a deal recruiting is for, for college football fans. Yeah, absolutely. It's the lifeblood of your program. You know, it, it's the it, – it's, I mean, you can talk about the team all year long, but you can certainly talk about recruiting all year long – there's always something happening, whether it's visits, offers, camps, um, official visit season, all sorts of things. Uh, and, and it's just about to ramp back up, too, as we, as we uh, close out of August. You know, obviously the dead period is going to uh, lift and uh, coaches are going to get back on the road, see kids on their Friday night games, Thursday night games, and, and obviously be able to host visits again throughout the fall up until the early signing period. So we're kind of hitting that home stretch here um, w- when things really are going to start, um, you know, picking up in speed and, and, and happening fast again. Yeah. We'll obviously talk about a lot of the 2024 recruits in this video, but you know, since this is, this is the first time I've had the chance to talk to you kind of want to get your thoughts on the job Sark has done to this point in terms of recruiting, obviously was able to close on a top three class here in uh, 2023, but overall what he's done at Texas, not necessarily on the field, but on the recruiting front, how would you grade the job that Sark has done there? I think he's done a tremendous job. I, I would certainly give him an A plus in that category. Um, obviously, you know, he he's I think one of the biggest things you have to do at a at a program like Texas is 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 make sure you connect with the Texas high school coaches. And I, I think, you know, maybe that's been lagging a little bit um, pre Sark um, kind of, you know, obviously, obviously after Mac Brown left, um, I, I think it kind of. Uh, you know, hit a pause a little bit with that that bond between the, you know the the high school coach association and in uh, in Texas, and I think Sark has recognized that that's a must. You know, you want to you want to get kids in your backyard when you can, and and you want to certainly make sure that that coaches know, uh, you know, one they're welcome at your program, and and two, you know, you're obviously going to invest into their programs and and, and you know recruit their guys um, certainly priority over other guys, and, and you know he's he's done a good job of that, and he's done a good job of you know expanding Texas's footprint on the recruiting map you know you know texas is very active on the west coast we've seen them land guys in california arizona um and, and even going in more in the southeast uh, sector of the country and, and, and working on guys um in that region you know we've seen alabama louisiana there's a big big commitment coming up this this weekend on friday from uh, dominic mckinley in louisiana um and so you know they're, they're dirt certainly um you know they're not leaving any stones unturned um, when it comes to scaring the country, but they're also making a really big impact at home too. And I, I think that's something he's really excelled at. And you, you, you know, I was at the high school coaches convention in, in July and, you know, just talking to all different coaches, you know, that's his question, you know, how, how do you feel that connection is? And, and everyone just said positive things um, in, in terms of what this staff is doing. So I think Stark's done a tremendous job and, and I think this will be another strong class in 2024 as well. Very good. Yeah, you said it, man. I mean, uh, the two predecessors at the University of Texas didn't always build and cultivate those good, strong relationships with the High School Coaches Association. It's good that Sark has been able to do a really, really good job, and I think it's obvious that that has paid dividends on the recruiting front to this point. You brought it up, man. Dominic McKinley, the five-star, commits tomorrow. It's been a pretty wild recruitment. You guys at Horns 24-7 have been all over this thing. Texas very much in the mix. A&M, Oklahoma, LSU. Feels pretty regional with Dominic McKinley. Uh, Your thoughts? Tell us a little bit about him and his game and also how do you think this thing shakes out tomorrow? Yeah, this is one of those SEC recruitments, you know, you want to win, you know, you 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 want to be big in the trenches and, uh, and Dominic McKinley is that. He's big, he's athletic, um, he's a disruptor. You know, he he gets after gets after guys, and 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 you know, you, you look at his offer list. You look at these programs that are, you know, going after him, um, and you know, that it's reflective of that um, of his talent level. He's a twenty four seven sports five star, um, and, and he he's just a big time target in, in a class that you know Texas is trying to hit big on the defensive line. We've seen them. You know, get their three guys throughout the summer, DeAndre Robinson, Melvin Hills, and Alex January. And, and they would love to add Dominic McKinley to go with that. And, and it's, it's really, you know, as we're almost 24 hours out uh, from, from his announcement on Friday, 
it's it's kind of a tough tough recruitment to put your finger on. You know, I, I actually I was the first to put in a crystal ball prediction um, at the beginning of August for Dominic McKinley to Texas, and I'm still on Texas, um, and and I, I felt pretty confident about that prediction up until you know Monday of this week um, when there's been some chatter about Texas A&M really kind of reemerging and being a, a, a strong factor in this recruitment. Um, and the, the main contenders, I should say, Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, LSU, Ohio State. You look at where he's from, Lafayette, Louisiana, you would think, oh, that, that's LSU. He's going to go to LSU if they want him. LSU does want him, but it looks like he's going to leave the state um, at least on, on uh, you know, September 1st tomorrow when he announces his decision. Um, and, and there's been a lot of debate about who the top contenders are. It's been Texas, Oklahoma, Texas, Texas A&M. I, I think there was a reporter earlier this week that's Oklahoma versus Texas A&M. Um, what I do know is Texas has been in contact with him and his mother, uh, his family, his camp all week. Um, Steve Sarkeesian talks to Dominic McKinley's mom often. Um, they took their official visit to Austin in, uh, in June. And, and that was really what kind of sparked that momentum um, from everything I was hearing in terms of Texas's chances uh, to actually pull him out of Louisiana and, and sign him in this class. Um, he's a computer science major. Uh, you don't hear that a lot um, <laughs> with, uh, with recruiting. You know, you, I ask kids, you know, what, what's their academic plan? Uh, sometimes they don't know. Sometimes, you know, they're going to go into, you know, business, something like that. Dominic McKinley is computer science. And, and so, you know, that the academic side of things are certainly important. I think that gave Texas a leg up. You look at the rankings of all these schools and uh, Texas is a top 10 computer science program in the country. Um, and, and, you know, I think he's really connected with Bo Davis as well. And obviously, you know, Bo Davis's track record speaks for itself in terms of uh, developing defensive linemen. Um, and, and I think that really, uh, really piqued Dominic McKinley and, and his mom's interest. Um, and, you know, I, I think she felt, she feels good, you know, about him picking Texas if that's the choice on Friday. So um, I'm still on Texas. Um, I know some people are picking Texas A&M. I, I you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I've been reaching out to people all day. You know, he's, he's a very quiet kid. Uh, they're not going to, they're not going to give away too much before tomorrow. Um, so we might just have to wait and see till three 30 central time on Friday. Um, I, I think most I'd probably do at this point is just lower my confidence score on Texas. Um, mm -hmm. I, they're very st much still in the mix. Um, I'm not discounting Texas A&M. Um, obviously Oklahoma is still, still in there as well with Todd Bates. Um, and they just pulled off David stone um, from IMG Academy. So uh, interesting recruitment. Um, it's definitely yeah. it's one of these ones that makes it fun to, you know, tune into these kind of announcements. Oh, for sure. It'll be a huge coup for Steve Sarkeesian, Bo Davis, and this entire Texas coaching staff. So that's tomorrow. What about Saturday? It doesn't sound like this Rice weekend is the biggest official visit weekend for Texas on the recruiting front, but any names of guys coming into town that Texas fans should maybe know about? Yeah, I, I think, you know, obviously your commits, you got your, your guys coming in, uh, Trey Owens, Jordan Washington, uh, you know, the main guys, Melvin Hills, Daniel Cruz, I believe. Uh, the visitors list is posted over at Horns 24-7 from, uh, from our guy Jordan Scruggs. But the biggest 2024 name of note is Wardell Mack. And, and that's another, you know, the, the, all these recruitments, I feel, this in the last two months have been, you know, you would think the NIL era would kind of make things more, you know, black and white in terms of, you know, oh, this is going to happen here, this is going to happen there. But uh, you know, I feel like since I've uh, been on this beat since the beginning of June, there's been some recruitments that have really gone down to the last minute that that can go either way. Uh, Wardell Mack was another guy, same weekend as uh, Dominic McKinley on that official visit weekend in late June in Austin. He uh, uh, came to the 40 Acres with his parents, um, and, and he left that visit. And I, I you know, I, I got the impression from talking to people close to the recruitment that Texas was the team to beat. Um, Florida was obviously number two. That that was the school he was also looking at. Another kid from Louisiana that that's not um, going to end up at LSU at least not right now. Um, commits to Florida at the beginning of the month. Um, I had my pick on Texas, so I missed that one. But might get a chance to redeem myself with that prediction. You know, he, he's supposed to visit this weekend, um, so he's certainly not closing the door on Texas. Um, and you know, it's people get worried about decisions made in, in August, and I get it. You know, you want to get guys when you get them, but you know, it's a long way until signing day. You know, there's there's visits to be taken. You know, we could see Texas make a playoff push and really get some momentum on the football field. That's going to turn some heads for kids, too, if that were to happen as well. So, you know, the fact that he just committed to Florida and he's already turning around and coming back to Texas for a visit, I think that uh, that that's a positive sign in terms of, you know, still being the mix. And in Texas is, you know, they, they you know, you look at him, Kobe Black, those are kind of the big two cornerback targets right now. Kobe Black's obviously still uncommitted, but, uh, you know, Wardell Mack is a guy they want in, the, in this cycle and, and it looks to be still interested in the, in the Longhorns.
And you guys feel pretty good about Kobe Black right now. You said it, not committed. I think uh, I was reading on y'all's site that he's going to wait till after the season is over before he makes that commitment. But Kobe Black still in good standing with the Horns? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I actually went up to Waco a few weeks back to, to see him and, uh, and and talk to his coaches, talk to, uh, just, you know, watch him practice. And, you know, I, I still get the feeling I, I crystal balled him to Texas afterwards. He, he's not saying that. He's not saying he's, you know, leaning to Texas or any, or any which way. He's actually trying to – he, he sounds pretty open actually when you, when you talk to him, um, he did tell me, you know, he was, he was calling off his visit to Alabama, um, in October. So that's a positive sign. If you're Texas, you know, you don't have to deal with Nick Saban and, and, uh, recruiting against him for a cornerback target. Um, but still some schools in the mix. LSU, um, is a school he still might visit. Um, obviously Texas a is making a big push for him. Um, I believe Oklahoma, Ohio state are in the mix as well for him. But I think, I think he's, uh, I, I think he, I think Texas, he's the lean, leaning to Texas right now. Um, at least, you know, privately, that's my impression from talking to people close to the recruitment. Um, and, you know, he's probably, there's, you know, there's, there's a handful of targets left for Texas and, you know, he, he's up there on that list in terms of, uh, guys they want to get. He actually had a really strong season opener. Uh, I think he had a 95 yard, something touchdown reception, Mike Roach from 24 seven sports was there, has it on video. Um, nice. so he, he's a, he's a do it all guy. Certainly, you know, he, he projects to the secondary, the next level, but, um, a lot of upside absolutely with, uh, Kobe Black. Hank, I want to ask you about a current Texas commit, the wide receiver Parker Livingstone. Um, am I am I reading this stat line right from his high school season opener last week? 12 catches, 252 yards, three touchdowns, also a kick return touchdown, and he threw for a touchdown too. Do I have all of that right? Yeah, I, I think so. It's a long list. So you, yeah, uh, no, just a, a, a phenomenal season opener for Parker Livingston. Um you know, every tweet I saw on Saturday, I know Jordan Scruggs was there. Uh, he got highlights from him uh, from from that game. But, you know, everyone was saying, you know, whatever he's ranked, it's not high enough. And, you know, that <laughs> he keeps that kind of performance going throughout the year. Um, I think Parker's going to see himself uh, get a boost in the rankings. But it just goes to show, you know, you, you see how, you know, th this staff coveted him, um, you know, in, in a class that, you know, there's guys like Micah Hudson, Ryan Wingo. Um, and they took Parker Livingston this summer and, you know, that, that, that's, that just goes to show, you know, how highly they thought of him. And it looks like they were, they were pretty right on their eval in, in terms of, uh, what he can do on the football field. Yeah. No disrespect to Parker, but you brought up those other two names that every Texas fan has been talking about. I know you guys at Horns 24 seven on the forums get asked about Micah Hudson and uh, Ryan Wingo all of the time. Uh, any updates were where things stand with those two guys? I mean, Hudson's been all over the place. It sort of feels like most people think Texas tech is the leader in the clubhouse right now. I know Texas hasn't given up there. And then uh, obviously with Ryan Wingo out of St. Louis, what, uh, what are you hearing about those two cats? Yeah, Hudson, you know, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Um, I, I think it's interesting he hasn't announced a commitment yet. And I know um, uh, Jordan Scruggs interviewed him the other day at a scrimmage. Um, and he said he might not even make an announcement. He might just, you know, be one of those guys that enrolls somewhere. You know, he's, he's certainly not one that really cares for the recruiting spotlight. I um, mean, that usually the, those are usually the best players from my experience covering recruiting. The guys that, that kind of just, you know, stick to their business and, and, and worry about football and themselves and, not all the hype. Those are usually the guys that, that, uh, that ball out and, and, uh, and, you know, Michael Hudson, we'll see what happens. You know, I, I think Texas tech is, is the leader for him. I think I would be surprised if, if he picked anywhere else at this point, but again, you know, let's see if Texas reels off some wins, looks really strong in the passing attack. Um, you know, crazier things have happened in recruiting. Maybe they can, they can uh, flip the story there. And then Ryan Wingo, I think that's much more realistic of a chance for Texas right now, at least. Um, uh, another guy, we, you know, those two June official visit weekends, you know, pretty much every Texas target, you know, we can, we can look back and say, Oh, he officially visited in June. Um, and that was really where, again, another guy that te Texas picked up, um, uh, some momentum for coming off that weekend. Um, and, and, you know, we look at this weekend with rice in town, but you fast forward two weeks from now with, uh, Wyoming, that could be a, uh, a game where, uh, Ryan Wingo returns to Austin for, uh, an unofficial visit. Um, so that's going to be, you know, Steve Wilfong um, has been all over this recruitment with 24 seven sports. I um, mean, you know, he's, he's in St. Louis, Ryan Wingo that is. Um, so Missouri is certainly a school to watch. They recently picked up that five-star defensive lineman, kept him home away from Oklahoma. Um, and, you know, they're, they're trying to get Ryan Wingo too. So um, he, he's tentatively set to announce on December 20th. I think there was a report report out recently that uh, he might do it earlier. Um, so, so we'll see, but that's a Texas and Missouri battle. You don't get a lot of those, um, yeah. I feel like. Um, so definitely interesting, and and we'll see if Texas can kind of regain some uh, regain some of that buzz. You know, if he, if he gets back in town in a couple of weeks. 
I've been putting off this question for as long as I could, Hank, but I know you guys, uh, and obviously want to encourage all of our viewers to check out the great work you do over at Horns 24-7. You guys are all over this stuff, 24-7, 365, hence the name. But uh, Mini Umeo Zulu, I know his name's not Mini, and he's 6'4", 210, so I, I, it's probably wrong to call him Mini. But of course, the younger brother of Neto Umeo Zulu on this Texas roster right now, a D lineman, Zena is how you pronounce his first name. Do I have that right? Mm-hmm. Nope. Yeah, your, your thoughts on him? It, it feels like it's a Texas versus A and M versus Oklahoma battle. Obviously, you would think Texas has the advantage of having older brother on the roster right now, but no commitment just yet. Uh, what are you hearing about the four star D lineman? Yeah, and I should have mentioned him a minute ago when we were talking about notable twenty twenty four visitors for this weekend because I certainly don't want to leave him out. He's a big target of Texas's, and he, he's also expected on campus on Saturday um, for the season opener for Texas. So um, certainly another big visitor there. He and Wardell Mack, the two most notable in terms of uh, uncommitted to Texas. Uh, Wardell Mack's committed to Florida. So he is a committed recruit. He's just committed to Florida. Um, but no, I, I you know, it, it's funny. I used to cover Alabama um, and his older brother, obviously Nito. Uh, he uh, I never was able to get him on the phone or anything, get really any information from him. He officially visited Bama, I think. And, you know, that that's kind of the uh, the trend, trend line with, uh, with uh, little brother as well. Uh, but, you know, I, I think you kind of, you, you know, you follow the visits. He took his official visit in the summer. Um, he, he's visited all these other programs. And the buzz from what we're hearing behind the scenes and people that are close to that recruitment is the feeling is Texas is, you know, probably in the driver's seat. Um, but, again, he, he's a guy that's going to take some visits this fall probably. Um, all these, these It's interesting now. It doesn't get talked about much is these kids can take as many official visits as they want now. Um, ever since July 1st, uh, there's a new NCAA rule. You can't visit the same school twice. Um, unless there's a coaching change, but you can take as many official visits as you want. So that kind of opens the door for kids that, that want to see, uh, maybe see some other programs they, they um, in previous years couldn't um, just to the, the five visit limit. So um, I think Texas is in good standing. Um, you know, I think certainly having your older brother on the roster helps um, home state uh, and Texas is pushing for them. They, they, they're trying to add more edge rushers in this class. They got Colin Simmons. That was their biggest target. And, uh, and uh, Zeno Mizulu is, is, is right there next up so um i think texas is in a good spot there but it might just be kind of a um gotta wait last thing for this week hank and really do appreciate your time once again and really excited about this weekly feature we've got coming on texas sports unfiltered Uh, i'm kind of putting you on the spot here man just uh one of the craziest if you could think of the craziest or one of the craziest recruiting stories you've been covering this for a long time you mentioned you were at alabama before this but you've been uh focused on recruiting for a lot of your career you got uh, a crazy story about a wild recruitment that uh, you're willing to share right now oh i the the most notable recruitment i in my career so far has been Najee harris um you know long time alabama commit he committed to alabama in the spring of his sophomore year and just from that point on it was you know when is he going to flip from alabama and it was constantly mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Michigan was pushing to get him. Um, you know, the, we were flight tracking from the Army Bowl, um, trying to figure out where he was leaving. It was pre early signing period area, so it wasn't where you signed, it was where you flew to and actually moved in, um, in early January if you were an early enrollee, because I was obviously still February signing period drama. So that was one. Um, another one that Raekwon Davis, who, who, uh, that was my first full cycle covering recruiting as a class of 2016. He was committed to Alabama as well. Same situation. It was, you know, everyone was trying to flip him. Um, it, it, you know, Southeast recruiting state of Mississippi kids tend to stay in the state of Mississippi when all is said and done. Now everyone says, you know, don't get excited. If you get a Mississippi commit, they're probably going to stay with Ole Miss or Mississippi state. It's just how it happens. Um, Bama has obviously, you know, changed that narrative a little bit, but Raekwon Davis took an official visit late to Mississippi state. Um, and and uh, there was reports that he flipped to Mississippi State. It was like late January, and uh, uh, I was even taking calls from like people in the industry saying, you know, they they just talked to, uh, you know, apparently Raekwon Davis had just told Dan Mullen he was flipping in his office. It was done, and then we reached out to Raekwon Davis, um, and he said, no, I haven't flipped. Uh, from him, you know, messaging him on Twitter, and then there was another report yeah. that someone had his phone and was saying he did flip. That was wild too. We ended up not switching him to. Because nobody could get clear word. Um, we ended yeah. up keeping him committed to Alabama on, in our database. Um, he ended up visiting Tuscaloosa the following weekend. He stuck with Alabama. He signed with Alabama, um, and obviously ended up being a, a really a really good player. And is, I think he's on the Dolphins right now. So worked out for him sticking with Alabama. But that's another one. I mean, there, there's there's a bunch, um, but those two kind of stick out a lot when I think Man. about it. 
recruiting. It's awesome. It <laughs> is awesome, and it never stops. Hank, this was a ton of fun. Y'all make sure to follow Hank on Twitter at HankSouth247, and of course, check out the great work that he and Jordan and Chip and Jeff and Mike and everybody does on site over there at Horns247.com. Mike, this was great. We will uh, talk again next week, my friend. Sounds good. Thanks, Brad.